okay guys, so this is Transition Metals and you've just got to have learned those colours of all the different ligands with their formulas. If you haven't boot camped that yet until you know them all off by heart, stop the video and do that. There's no point going forward until you know all those colours with the formulas. So if you have done that, well done. What I've got here, it's, it's kind of one question, but it's kind of three questions in one. I'm just going to go through them to show you how to apply your knowledge of those colours and those formulas. And the question is, identify chemical A, B and C and use equations to show what's happening. So we need identification of the chemical with equations. Equation or equations, depending on. So it's split into three parts. There's a paragraph about A, paragraph about B, paragraph about C. To start off with, can you stop the tape and can you try and answer this first paragraph about A? Welcome back. So here's what I would do. First of all, I'd try and identify what the ligands are that are being added. So we're adding conch HCl. So my ligand is going to be chloride Cl- because of course that will fully dissociate as it's a strong acid. I would also look at all the colours, and bearing in mind you know all the colours now, try and figure out what is the central metal ion. So if we look at this, we've got a light blue solution, a green solution, and a yellow solution. Well, there's only one central metal ion which has a blue solution and a yellow solution, that's copper. So what we're going to be starting off with is hexa-aqua copper. What charge will this have? Well, I hope you've learnt it off by heart, but if they gave you a weird one, copper is always 2 plus in these. Water does have, doesn't have a charge. Add them all up, so it'll be 2 plus. We're adding our chloride ions, so that'll be plus 4 Cl minus. Why 4? Because chlorides form a tetrahedral shape with a coordination number of 4, 4 bonds. So what's that going to give us? That'll give us Cl, Cl4. What will the charge be? Cop is 2 plus, chloride is minus, so 2 minus 4, 2 minus. All good? Well, no, not quite, because I've forgotten about the six waters that are released. So in terms of our colours, we have a light blue solution, and we have a yellow solution. So what's all this green all about then? Well, what's happening here, and it's just a little thing to watch out for, is when we first add our chloride, we're not um, substituting all of this to give our yellow solution. Only some of the hexa-aqua copper is reacting at first. And so at first, we end up with a mixture of hexa-aqua copper and copper chloride, a mixture of blue and yellow. And if you know your colour wheel, blue and yellow make green. So at first, let's get the green solution. At first, our solution will turn green, and only when we've reacted enough for all of the hexa-aqua copper will it go yellow. Okay, so something to watch out for. So in conclusion, uh, solution A is hexa-aqua copper. If you want to stop the tape then, have a go at identifying solution B with an equation back. So what have we got then? Here is our chemical we're adding. So it's going to be hydroxide as a ligand, OH minus. And what colours do we have? Green solution to green precipitate. So hopefully you find this a bit of an easy one. Uh, green is iron 2. Iron 2 is the green one. So we're going to be starting with hexa aqua iron 2. We're going to need two hydroxides to cancel the 2 plus charge on the iron. And that's going to give us iron 2 hydroxide. And then don't forget the six waters as well. So this is our green solution. This is the green precipitate. All I did is I applied my knowledge of the colours. Um, in terms of the precipitates, the hydroxides, if you wanted to know bit beyond the scope of the course, but if you want to know it, the reason why they precipitate is because they've got no overall charge. So you can just build up and build up and build up. 
Whereas with your non-hydroxides, they all end up with a charge. And so imagine you've got two of these complex ions, both with a positive charge, getting close to each other. They're going to repel, and so they can't build up into a solid. I'll just, an extra little thing as well. One ex exception to the rule is this hydroxide here. So chromium's 3 plus, together that's 6 minus. So overall, this hydroxide does have a charge, and so is a solution, not a precipitate. It's the only hydroxide that's on the syllabus, which is a solution, not a precipitate, because it's got that charge. And so in conclusion, chemical B must be hexaaqua ion 2. So stop the tape, have a go at identifying compound C. Welcome back. This is definitely a bit of a difficult one here. Let, let's go through the question. We've got ammonia, so we're thinking that probably is going to be our ligand, maybe. And we're getting a blue precipitate, which is then going to a dark blue solution. So we're getting two colour changes, even though we've just added one chemical. Well, what's happening here? This is definitely the hardest one, I think, out of all of them. That's why we've saved it to last. Um, but if you can get this, you should be fine with everything. So, I've got my ammonia, and what actually happens, because ammonia is a base, because the nitrogen has a lone pair, is it can react with water and accept a H+, to become ammonium, which we don't really care about for now, and hydroxide. And this hydroxide initially acts uh, to do the reaction, not the ammonia. So it's a bit of a trick in a way. So what's going to happen? Well, let's look at our colours. We've got a blue precipitate and a dark blue solution. Which is the transition metal which has those colours? Well, copper. That's the only one which has those colours. So it's got to be copper. So we're we'll going to be assuming we're starting from hexaraqua copper. Two plus. And this is going to react with some of the hydroxides. So it's going to react with two hydroxides to give copper hydroxide, and don't forget the water. So that's going from a blue solution. Technically, the question didn't say we started with a blue solution, so I suppose this doesn't have to be the starting compound, but what else is it going to be? And so this is going to go to a blue precipitate. Eventually, if you keep on adding ammonia, you get so much ammonia that it will eventually react. And so our copper hydroxide reacts with some ammonias. It reacts with four ammonias, two waters, and we get this beast here. Copper is two plus. These don't have a charge. So overall it's 2 plus, and don't forget, we're going to get our two hydroxides released. So our blue precipitate then redissolves to give this, which is the dark blue solution. Okay, so that's the kind of idea. Look for the colours and just, the main thing is look for the colours and think which transition metal do I know involves those colours. Thank you very much.